It's Friday night, live from Anglesey, aka Dark Sky Island. I'm just about there. Good evening. I am Vicky Duncalf, and hello to you, popular astronomers. This is our weekly chat show, and tonight it is a solstice special. So we have got all sorts of excellent guests lined up for you, and also a quick, easy competition. If you can see scrolling along the bottom of this, it says image challenge, post your best picture of the sun in the comments of this video to win a solar can pinhole camera. Now, don't worry if you don't know what a solar can pinhole camera is. Trust me, you're going to want one and we're going to be in interviewing the inventor of that later on. But for now, start uploading any picture that you have got of the sun in any form. It can be arty, it can be scientific, it can be an observation that you took or just even a nice shadow picture. You need to post it in the comments of this and at the end of the show we will judge the best one and you can win a solar cam camera. And as I say, it doesn't matter if you don't know what one is just yet, you will in about half an hour and I guarantee you will want one. So how's it going then? How confusing is the weather at the minute? We've got the mega heat of the midsummer sun burning down through several thousand feet of cloud, leading me to wear some very unusual clothing combinations at the minute. I'm kind of in summer thermals, if that makes sense. So... Let's have a look at who we have got on the show this evening. First of all, our first guest is Carolyn Kennett. She lives in Cornwall and loves stargazing. She's a historian of astronomy and an archaeo astronomer. She spends lots of time wandering the moors, looking for links between the stones and the stars. Our second guest is Sam Cornwell of SolarCan. Born from a love of photography, art and astronomy, SolarCan is a unique camera designed to produce extreme time exposure um, exposures that capture the sun's path across the sky. And if you post your most artistic and wonderful image of the sun in the comments of this video, you've only got until, uh, what time is it, eight o'clock? You've only got until nine o'clock to win it. You've got one hour to go through your hard drive, to go through your stick drives, drag off the best picture of the sun that you have got and um, upload it into the comments to win a solar can worth about, they're worth about 15 pounds. So it's a brilliant prize. And our third guest this evening is our very much beloved Sandra Brantingham, SPA Section Director for Aurora and Noctilucent Clouds. So, our beloved, he is lovely, Paul Sutherland. Paul has been working so hard, one of the leading lights of the SPA. He has been working hard to design a whole batch of mugs. Now, obviously, I've got one of the uh, Mark mark one ones because it's kind of just got the wonderful i love this spa blue it's beautiful isn't it but mine just says spa on both sides but paul who is punmeister extraordinaire has been working on a variety of mug designs i'm not going to show you them i'm going to read you them and you can take your pick on the popastro.com website shop so we have got such catchphrases as the sun saying i'm too hot to handle <laughs> Actually, these are quite good, Paul. Then there's one with a galaxy on it that says, I make my drinks the Milky Way. <laughs> so, then there's one with Mars. It's got a Mars image on that says, it's time to mug up on Mars. Then we've got one of the moon in a kind of, I'm going to say, a waxing gibbous phase. It's just a phase I'm going through. Then we've got uh, the one with our ACE SPA logo that said astronomy is looking up. And then one with a spiral galaxy. I don't recognize which galaxy that is, but it's very beautiful. It's on the side of the mug. And the pun on the mug is stirry, stirry night. So these are available for $8.99 on popastro.com on the shop. Uh, please purchase one because there really is nothing finer to drink your cup of tea, coffee, beverage of choice out of. So this is an interactive show. We love the comments coming in. So please start commenting away. We have got, oh, Kath's on. Kath, very sad not to have you on tonight, but we have got a worthy double in your honor. Um, hello, good evening, Kath um, and everyone. Thank you for joining us and supporting us. Joe Bourne, good evening. Joe, your image of yourself with the mug, it needs upgrading on your profile picture, my darling. Kath's on also saying hello to Ian. Yeah, Ian is with us as well. So 
We are now going to go over to Cornwall. Now, I'm on Anglesey, and when you go to Cornwall, you notice that the rocks are very, very similar, very um, kind of... Um, what is the word for that? I'm going to have to call on an archaeoastronomer to tell me when uh, the strata are... are, are oh, here you go, look. Here we go. Be the first on your in your Astro Society to have one of our great new mugs. You will be the talk of the telescopic town if you have one of these. <laughs> right, we're going to cut over to Caroline now. Uh, Carolyn now. Carolyn, are you ready? I'm coming to you in three, two, one, and you can tell me the name of Wavy Rocks. Hi, Vicky. Hi, there. <laughs> Hi, all the way from Cornwall. And it's Wavy Rocks. Yes. <laughs> maybe, yes. maybe Craggy Rocks. I don't know, but they're granite. Anyway, so that's what they're all made of in West Cornwall. Nice, cr craggy granite. Very good. Yeah, I think we've got something called schist here, or it might be pronounced schist. Uh, oh, yeah. Very um, ultra wavy, and my mind is gone blank. Um, I'm, I can see them out the window now. The strata are, um, oh, what's the word when the. We need some uh, help here, please. We need a geologist. <laughs> my mind's gone blank. What a wavy rock for, please. <laughs> How are you, Carolyn? It's lovely to finally speak to you. Yeah, very well. Yeah, keeping really well. So and enjoying lockdown, as they say. So it's nice and quiet in Cornwall. So uh, spending a lot of time outdoors and the weather's been great. So we've had lots of stargazing opportunities recently, which is really good. So. That's lovely. So tell us a little bit more about what you do then, please. Well, first of all, actually, although you'd never guess it from looking at the weather and the fact I'm wearing uh, woolly boots, it's the solstice tomorrow, isn't it? Yes, yes. Here's the solstice. Oh, I've got my yes. lovely Excellent. solstice t-shirt on for you. So it's, it's really exciting that it's the solstice. That's I really love good. the solstice. And um, maybe if I tell you a little bit about what the solstice is and then a little bit about what I do. So Please the solstice do. is tomorrow, so it's on the 20th of June this year, and it's actually at 10.43 in the evening. So that seems a bit bizarre because it will almost be dark. But what that actually means is that the sun is at its most northerly latitude, so it's directly above the Tropic of Cancer. So that is the moment that the sun is directly above the Tropic of Cancer. It only sits there for a little while and then it starts to sink south again. And as we move towards equinox, the, the sun would be directly over the equator. And then as we move towards the winter solstice, it's over the Tropic of Capricorn. So what does that mean for us on the ground? Well, it means here in the Northern Hemisphere, we have wonderful, long, sunny days, hopefully with no cloud in the way. And it means that the sun is rising and setting in its most northerly position. So it's still rising in the east and setting in the west, but it's right up uh, towards the north and it's arching over the sky really high over and giving us all those wonderful daylight hours. So the wonderful thing about a solstice is that the sun actually starts to decrease its motion on the horizon until it reaches the solstice. And the word solstice means the sun it has become stationary. And then it's going to turn round and, and it's going to move back down towards its equinox position, which the equinox position is rising directly in the east and setting in the west. But this, uh, this point where it it is at its most northerly position of rising and setting. It, it's so small, the motion of it, we can actually see the sun with our own eyes. We, we don't, it's not discernible to us. So it would rise and set in virtually the same position for about eight days, it does. And this has allowed people in ancient times to mark this position on the horizon. So. Oh, I did not know that. So that's how they got it, because it kind of just sticks in the sky and like it a bouncing sits, ball. Yeah, every, every morning it would rise and, and then every evening it would set for, for a number of days. It's not discernible to us with our eyes. Obviously, with modern telescopes and things, people can pick that apart. But for about eight days, it's, it's hanging in the same spot for a rising and setting point. So... When, when we think about going to places like Stonehenge and looking at where the heel stone is to, to the other stones, that, that, would, that alignment 
which they set up. They had a number of days to do that. So it didn't matter if a few of those days were cloudy because they could still possibly see that event happen on, on a day, either, either a few days either side of the solstice as well. Although it would be the solstice itself that they would be celebrating. So, um, I've always had this image of them waiting for the, almost like they're a rabbit to come out of a hole, waiting for the shadow, right? Is a day longer? Is a day longer? Is a day? There it is. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Really <laughs> <happy days. laughs> no, it's, it's really, yeah, there is quite a few days either side. As I say, there's about four days either side where the, it's in the same position for us with our eyes. And, and if we were to go out and mark it with a stick, if we were to stand in the same spot, go out and mark it with a stick, we, we probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference the next day or the day after. So that was how they were able to set up um, some of these ancient monuments, um, particularly at the solstice point um, for winter solstice and summer solstice. So if you, you have a passage grave where the sun is going to rise or set and it's going to shine down into a tomb. Like I think you've got a really nice example on Anglesey. It's the Ben, uh, I can't remember the name of it, Kelly. And yeah, it, you've got a really nice example anyway, a Bronze Age one. But we, we've got similar things down here. And obviously, there's Newgrange is the one that everyone's heard of in Ireland, where it's got the long passageway, and that's a winter solstice aligned one. And the sun would rise on the winter solstice, shine all the way down the passageway and then illuminate the tomb at the back. Well, we have a similar one on the Isles of Tilly, uh, which is just a small set of islands, just off about 26 miles off the coast of West Cornwall, and it's Paul Pellock, and that one works on the summer solstice sunset. So you actually have to climb into the grave, so you climb into the darkness, and then you wait for the sun to come and set. And as the sun sets, it shines down the passage. You don't look that excited. <laughs> I just I was just thinking, do you know what thought was going through my head? Oh, I could go and join the druids at sunrise tomorrow morning. And I just had visions of what a nightmare that would be with social distancing and not being allowed. Yeah, I just had this vision in my head and thought it's not gonna happen. And I went from no, going no. I was gonna say English Heritage are actually live streaming tomorrow. So oh, yes, Stonehenge is. isn't open. Um, Stonehenge is shut, uh, so but it means that everyone can watch it from home. Oh, so, what time sunrise in the morning? It's about live streaming the dawn to morning. I think they're going online about yeah, it's early. So, here we're slightly later because we're that much further west. Um, I my sunrise is at 10 past five, so my alarm has already been set for um, about 10 to 4 tomorrow morning. So, I will get up and Go and, go and watch the sunrise. <laughs> no, do you know what I'm going to do? In a very bold move, let me just, where's my phone? I'm going to grab my phone, bear with me. I'm really... Setting myself up for a big fall tomorrow. By oh, feeling I would all day on Friday. <laughs> what time shall I set my alarm for? Four-ish? I'll, 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 um... yeah, well, it, it depends if you're going to watch the actual dawn from where you live or if you've got to travel somewhere or if you're going to just watch the live stream at Stonehenge which I think starts at 4 30 which you could obviously just do in bed yeah. <laughs> no need to go full druid no no <laughs> that'd be really lovely because every every year I've tried to watch the sunrise and always been thwarted for various reasons so that's one they go 4 30 oh, very good I'm lovely. liking that <laughs> I'm liking so how how has the solstice been marked in the past and how do we know? So we know from the monuments which have been left behind and the rituals that people, you've already mentioned the Druids, so these, these rituals have had a long, long history, some of them. So down here in Cornwall and, and across the UK, actually, there's often bonfires lit on the top of hilltops um, to mark the solstices and, you know, there's real traditions that go all the way back. So... Um, it's been really interesting. Recently, we've been putting together a booklet all about solar rituals and things like that and alignment here in Cornwall. And we're releasing that tomorrow for free. So maybe at the end, I can give you um, a little web link that you can put out to your people because it's a free download. It's got nine articles by lots of different authors all about solar alignments in Cornwall and solar 
connections with ancient communities. And I'm sure quite a few of the astronomy people might enjoy having a read. As I say, it's completely free. So I'll, I'll give you the link at the end. You can possibly pop it up on your website. That would be great. Ah, lovely, lovely. So you had an article in the SPA magazine, did you, oh, this yeah. one? Yeah. <laughs> I, was I made the front cover. I, I always love Ooh. it if I make the front cover because you never know. And they put on a wonderful picture of Stonehenge on the front cover, which was, was fab. Let me in the magazine. Hang on a minute. <laughs> have it around. Are we, oh, hang on. I think, oh, this Stonehenge is looking quite different nowadays. Oh, no, that's <laughs> not the one. It was the one before. <laughs> Oh, this it's is this the only one I'm afraid. So. <laughs> oh, lovely, lovely. So, what kind of stuff? Are there any celebrations happening in Cornwall then? Well, no, not 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 obviously with what's happening. There's yeah. So all, all the the bonfire lightings have been cancelled. Uh, so you know, it it is what it is at the moment. But I will be going out, and um, we're hopefully putting a drone up tomorrow. We've got commissions through to, from the airport down Land's End Way. So we're hopefully going to put a drone up and maybe have a go at taking some live stream or maybe even just some video and putting it out there later of, of the sunrise. If it all plays ball, it will probably be cloudy, but and, 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 and hopefully have some nice footage tomorrow with an ancient site and, and the sunrise going off. So <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> There's quite a lot of burial mounds around here, actually. I could probably, I'm just trying to think where the nearest one is. That would be really nice, actually. I wonder what the weather's going to be like tomorrow. Well, yeah. thank you so I much. I don't weather watch all week. So I won't weather watch all week. It's not much fun. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, God, don't get me started on the, the, the eclipse that we spent a thousand pounds on a holiday coming down to sea and just got rained oh, on. Oh, you come. Oh, no. It was really bad. Ninety-nine eclipse. <laughs> is that how long yeah. ago was that? That's how long I work at work out that I was with my ex-boyfriend for. So that's nineteen ninety-nine. Wow. Okay. Oh my god. Yeah. It was um because yeah. they 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 forecast biblical amounts of people descending on on Cornwall, didn't they? They did. Yeah. Yeah. And the hotel prices were insane. So we took the long way round. It took us about twelve hours to get down because we went down all the B roads, and it turned out there was no traffic, no people, fields full of empty campsites, and and wow. Yeah. Well, that's because everyone had looked at the weather forecast <laughs> and decided not to come. But yeah, eclipse. Uh, eclipses are always expensive. I, I did the one in the US two years ago, and yeah, it was. It was a pricey, pricey trip, but it was, was worthwhile. Worth it. it was worthwhile because obviously I chose somewhere where you were almost guaranteed to see it. So where is Cornwall? You You're never going to be guaranteed. <laughs> where did you see the eclipse from? Um, I went to Jackson Hole in Wyoming. So it's oh, a fairly that's... dry, dry area. So um, just south of Yellowstone, which is beautiful. So no. let's take a look at some of the comments then. Oh, Carolyn's article was in the March issue of Popular Astronomy and had a picture of Kalanish on the cover. Oh, that was Robin. Robin Stonehenge, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that I'm I'm sorry, Robin. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. You've tried, yes. <laughs> Waggy <laughs> thing, yeah. <laughs> so let's have a look. Kath here says, I thought the solstice was on Sunday morning, not Saturday. The, the, usually the date is the 21st that we say, yeah. but the, the solstice can vary. It can move. Um, yeah, and it, it is because it's when the sun reaches that position directly over the top of the cancer. So it can be on the 20th. And as I say, it's at 10.43 in the evening on the 20th is that actual point when it reaches that position. Whenever it, oh, here we go. Andy Smith needs to ask Carolyn a question about Stonehenge. Far away, Andy. Oh. Um, whenever it is the precise moment of solstice, I mark the moment on my phone. I um, set an alarm and I go out and I just stand there and go, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. It's done. <laughs> I prefer the winter solstice, though. It's a bit more hopeful it, it's for easier, me. It's easier, yeah. It's easier on for getting up. The getting up is the hard bit. I don't mind the evenings, the sunsets at this time of year, but the actual, yeah, the getting up like, is, is quite hard going. <laughs> um, Ch Chamara says, hello. Hi. Um, hi there. 
By the way, you are. That looks like a nice background picture. Um, Paul says, referring to the SPA mug, hello, Victoria. I like the way he calls me Victoria. There's nothing finer than SPA China. Oh, very I'm, nice rhyming. Yeah. I don't think that's China. <laughs> Uh, okay, so and Cass says, Paul, your one miners are fab. Of course they are. We used to get paid to do it for a living. He's brilliant. Um, let's have a look. Do you think this? Oh, do you think the blue stones depict constellation? Says Andy Smith. Um, it's not something that I would suggest that they do. I don't know that much about it. I've not really read anything about that. So, but I did recently go to a talk from an archaeologist who called Mike Parker Pearson, who's done a huge amount of work at Stonehenge, and also a talk slightly further back about six months from Clive Ruggles, and neither of them mentioned that. Mike Parker Pearson was actually mentioning where the blue stones came from, and they came from a, an, a stone circle out of North Wales, where they've been removed from there and then transported down to Stonehenge. So they did amazing new research on, on the blue stones. Um, but whether they depict constellations, I would very much doubt it, um, unless we've got a circular constellation out there. Uh, done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Carolyn, it's been so nice to speak to you. We've been friends it's on been Facebook. Wonderful. Well. Thank you very yeah. much. Have you got any more articles coming out soon? Um, I've got one or two. Um, there's uh, some research about the hurlers going to go into a journal called Skyscape Archaeology fairly soon. Uh, I've also been involved in a book about um, Neptune and Ooh. its discovery. So quite, quite a big, big, big project, that one. And um, and I've also, as I say, there's this booklet. So if I give the link to the booklet, everyone can go and download that tomorrow when it, once it goes live. So that's got some bits in there as well that they might enjoy to read. But yeah, it's been fab. I've, I've ordered a solar cam. I went oh, on and the house oh, really? wow, why haven't I got one of these? <laughs> I, the minute, I only saw my so first images from a solar cam yesterday and I bought it within like 10 seconds. Yeah, I'm going to go and strap it to a tree over an ancient site and hopefully no one steals it. So <laughs> I've got to find somewhere like a little bit remote to do it. But yeah, that's what I intend to do with it. We're going to put ours overlooking the Holy Head Mountain or Holy Head Mountain. It's a, known as the Holy Head of Anglesey, this amazing big um, monolith that rises out like a sphinx. And that's yeah. where the sun goes up and down. Oh, here we go. Robin says, the solstice is at 2144 Ut. Universal time and 10.44 British summer time tomorrow evening. Thank you, Robin, for that. Lovely. Great. Okay, Carolyn, it's been a pleasure. It's been fabulous. Thank you. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Bye. 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 That was lovely. Thank you very much. Keep your comments flooding in. <laughs> now, I'm led to believe when the stones are dressed, they show up as a... Okay, Andy's saying when the stones are dressed, they show up. The brighter stones in them. Oh, okay. Very lovely. Thank you for that, Andy. So to win a solar can camera this evening, please post your favorite picture that you've ever taken of the sun in the comments on Facebook. I'm fairly sure that you can upload um, directly to this video. Kath, let me know if I've got my facts wrong and whether you can or can't. And if not, you'll have to send it to uh, the email to info uh, secretary at popastro.com. So we have got fantastic um citizen science mini experiment taking place and it's going to be really easy to do this one it's so easy that even i managed to do it today it's called the solstice and it's the school's observatory is doing it so i'll post the link of how you can take part in the solstice experiment it is breathtakingly simple but the results will be breathtakingly amazing so the school's observatory is doing a quick citizen science experiment this weekend for the general public across the united kingdom they are asking people to input the length of the shadow of a stick measured at around 1 p.m on midsummer's day and I think you can do it on Sunday as well. This, and I'm not going to go into detail because I'm not precisely sure of the calculation. This in turn will help us calculate the size of the earth. 
And it'd be great to get as many people, especially kids, involved as possible. So I've been doing my own version of this. I've got a terrible confession to make, actually. I stole this week. I stole off a child. I stole some chalk off a child. You know, this amazing pavement chalk that um, the really thick stuff, the colourful stuff, never seen it before. And I've been wanting to do a compass experiment uh, out on the um, driveway. And um, and I tried to mark it out with sticks and it didn't really work. I tried to mark it out with stones. It didn't really work. So I nabbed a stick of chalk off a child who wasn't looking at the time. They had lots of chalk. I'm sorry. I was... <laughs> And I've sketched out a big compass and been measuring them all and um, measuring the shadows at one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock rock. And it, it forms an amazing ellipse. If you mark the um, the length of the shadow on the hour, it's really quite wonderful. And we were actually able to con um, calculate how many degrees west we are we're very far west here on Anglesey how far we are away from the meridian and just using my eye it turns out that I reckon that we were about five degrees west of the meridian and actually according to the GPS on the phone it's 4.5 degrees so I'm taking that one but tragedy I got home this evening and all my experiment has been washed away when I was scribbling on the ground, I thought, there's no way is that chalk going anywhere. Even if it rains, it's going to stain the ground, surely. Well, I've learned a thing or two about chalk this week. It rinses away very quickly and my whole experiment is gone. So I think the solstice experiment might be a little bit more reliable than the chalk. So get involved with that. It's a schoolsobservatory.org solstice experiment. It's like the word solstice, S O L. Uh, with stick at the end. There you go. Measure your stick, measure its shadow, help the school's observatory to calculate the size of the earth from your shadow observations. Fantastic. Okay, so coming up now, we have got um, Sam. Let's just let him into the chat room. Chat room, solar can Sam. That's a bit like me. I call myself Vicky Video. You're coming on in three, two, one. Hey, Sam. Hello. How you doing, Vicky? When you said you had props, you got props. Yeah, I've got plenty of props here. <laughs> How are you oh, doing? Lovely. I'm really good. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Let's just have a quick look at the comments that we've got. Okay, um, I can't upload the picture, but maybe ju that's just me. Uh, yeah, okay. S we were hoping, Sam, that we could give away um, a solar cam to the best sun picture this evening, but um, it might have to be um, in a day or two once we've sorted this out. We can send the pictures to Robin. There we go, Robin at popastro.com. So you can judge the best picture if you want. Oh, I'd love to. What, what, what <laughs> pictures are people sending in? Pictures of the sun? Of Just of the sun, yeah, just Ooh, of the sun. Love and the sun. You, you seem to know a thing or two about photography there, Sam. Uh, a little bit about photography. I'm a phot photographer by trade, but uh, Soda Can is kind of a little bit what I've become known for recently because it's uh, it's proved fairly popular over the last three years. And, and this year, this this Soda Can Day that's coming up has well, created a lot of this excitement on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and what have you. Excellent. So tell us a little bit more. Well, first of all, where are you in the world? I'm in the Scottish borders in a town called Hoyk, and I'm in my workshop, my solar can workshop at the moment. Okay, so what is solar can then? What is solar can? That's a solar can. <laughs> or this is a solar can. So inside one of this is one of these. And it's, to put it simply, an extreme time exposure camera capable of capturing the path of the sun over days, weeks, months, or years. So it works with the camera. There's a piece of photographic paper inside it. There's a pinhole on the front. And this is traditionally uh, a workshop idea that people used to do. They've been doing it for about 20 years. Uh, but I decided to create something that took away some of the mystery from it and created a one-stop package that people could buy very cheap and, uh, and use and learn about solography, learn about photography, learn about astronomy, and learn about the, the place they have in the world uh, and the way the sun travels for our sky. And it's, well, it's proved popular. Could you show us some of the results from SolarCan, please? Yeah, sure. There's a, there's a few dotted around here. I've got, got them all over, over in front of me here. I've got a couple up on the wall here. Uh, I'll show you some results of what a SolarCan image looks like. 
So they're very um, arty and abstract and yeah. almost ghostly, I guess. They're not just like a like a picture of the sunset. They, well, how do you get these amazing colours on it? Wow, look at that. Yeah, so this one's got a reflection in it here. So you can see a reflection. Just let me have a fiddle with this and try and make you a bit bigger on the screen. Sure thing. Okay. Here's a nice image by a photographer called Al Knapp. Uh, and this one was accepted into the... Uh, Royal Astronomy Photographer of the Year Awards last year, which Good was very question. exciting for me. Very exciting. Good publicity. Uh, here's one by Daniel Monk of Kilda Observatory. Oh, just keep that there for a moment, please. Just yeah, hold it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. A little bit more. That's it. So, what's actually happened on that picture? Can Pete, you would just explain what they're getting on that, please? Oh yeah, I'd love to. Uh, so, what you can see there is a uh, every single line that you see going across the image on the top half of the image is the path of the sun. So uh, a line would be a nice sunny day, but a broken line would be a, a day with lots of clouds. That's why there's breaks in the lines and where there's complete gaps, that will be a very, very, very cloudy day, etc. a very dark day. What you see on the bottom here is reflections in the river Tyne. Oh, so you see the reflection there. So this is why you see in that abstract shape. So what I really love about uh, these images is that you can you can look at them and read them back through and sort of look at what happened in the year and what happened on certain days in certain periods, understand what's happening, find out certain aspects of each image, like what would this vertical line be here? Well, that would probably be a some sort of post or something, but this, these are different user images that people have sent in. Here's a very interesting small one by Matthew Robinson taken in uh, Finland in the Arctic Circle. That this looks like a very low sun. Um... Yeah, yeah, so what he captured here was the, uh, the sun rising above the horizon for the first time in months. So very exciting time for, for the people there, but I could carry on going through these. Yes, but just uh, I can't get enough of them. I used to be um, about 10 years ago into Lomography, which is you get like these kind of unusual Russian cameras that have very acidic hues and yeah, a bit like that really. Yeah. How do you get the yeah. colours? Well, how do we get the colours? Well, when the photographic paper comes out of this, so when you finish uh, exposing, so uh, I better explain how, how you pop them up. You, you pop one up with a couple of cable ties that come supplied with each uh, solar can and you leave it for several months. Uh, traditionally, people would put it up when the sun is at the highest or its lowest. We call that solar can day or the solstice, less commonly known as the solstice. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when people take it down, they open the top with a tin opener. Sam, I'm gonna stop you just as you're chatting. Yeah. What was that discount code for Pop Astro, please? Was it Pop Astro 20? 20. Pop Astro 20. So I'm just yeah. going to pop this on the banner, Pop Astro 20 yeah, discount sure. code. And it's solarcan.co.uk. Okay. So yeah. for solarcan discount. Yeah. So um, how much are they roughly? Because you can They're get 1595. How much, sorry? They're 1595 for one or £60 for five. And uh, I think I've provided you a 15% discount. That's jolly generous, love. Well, let me uh, put that there. Pop Astro. I'm just going to make sure I've got this correct. Pop Astro 20. For, there we go. How's that? For SolarCan discount code. For SolarCan discount, use Pop Astro 20. There we go. Looks That's good. Really good. As long as it's the right code, which I think it is. <laughs> Lovely. Okay. okay. So, uh, so you install it, and when you've finished. Uh, when you've run out of patience, really, or you, you set your timer to take it down after usually a few months for most people, you open it with a tin opener from the top and from the inside, you pull out a piece of photographic paper. And the piece of photographic paper will be essentially some black and white darkroom paper, which will look similar to this or maybe similar to the one that you can see up on the on the wall over there. It's a bigger one. It might be easier to look at. Sure. Oh, here. It's a beast. Yeah. There we go. So it's a bit, nice big one. They don't come out the, uh, the, the, the solar can that big, obviously. Uh, but you'll notice that the colour isn't black and white because the photographic paper, even though it's black and white photographic paper, it's solarised. So it solarises different unusual tones and colours. So 
once you've got to this stage, you take a photo of it or a scan of this, which you can do safely under normal white light, uh, just not in direct sunlight, and then invert the colors. And that's when the magic happens. And that's where you get your photos. And each one comes with a little manual, which uh, like this. So they all come with a manual of all the instructions. And inside on the center pages, we've got images that have been sent in from the community that are all over the world all over the world. So every uh, six months, we update the manual with different images. Here we go. They're so beautiful. Why are they so beautiful? It's the colors and the shapes and the, the relax. They're just magical, aren't they? Well, we come back to what lamography is, really. Uh, and that oh. it, it's, not a, it's not a perfect, uh, it's not a perfect art, or I guess it is a perfect art, where everything is going to be slightly different. Uh, you never never know uh, what sort of atmospheric conditions your solar can is going to be placed in, uh, if it's going to get very cold, if it's going to be very humid and damp and get a lot of maybe water inside it and uh, mess with the colours and the chemicals on, side, on the paper, etc. So every single one comes out completely different, and that's really exciting to me. I've rarely seen some the same. I, I even installed several uh, once on a particular uh, location, and I still got variations from one to the other that were slightly different. Uh, so it's, it's very interesting how they all look so different. Kathy's saying I might have to try a solar can. I mean, I only learned about these yesterday, and I'm already checking the letterbox waiting for mine. Well, I think yours went out first thing this morning, first class. So, yeah. oh, oh my god, it might be here tomorrow, just in time well, to. Yeah, I I put it on the. I upgraded everything this week to first class, so it would be in time. But uh, the thing is, which I think your previous guest mentioned, which I'm really pleased uh, they mentioned, was uh, that even though the solstice this year is on the 20th, which was very unusual, the difference between. Uh, you know, one week either side, the sun barely moves in the sky. Oh, okay, then we've got some time. Yeah, yeah, you. Got some time. So uh, this year, the 21st, which would be Sunday, which is what we're calling Solar Can Day, even though it's the day after what technically is the solstice, it's what normally the solstice is. Uh, the difference in height of the sun is one hundredth of a degree. Uh, but that will just ruin my photograph. Well, yeah, that would be absolutely fine. So it will be make no difference. In fact, if it does make a difference, it's because the the sun passes over the same line twice, and it will burn a slightly thicker line or a slightly darker line. And that's oh it's my all. gosh! It's oh, happen. it's so beautiful! I'm so excited. I'd love to just, just stay and show you loads because they're all so different, and that I love that there's all these community ones that are always submitted. They're always different colours because people. You know, they try different things. They edit them themselves. Okay. It's instructions of how to edit them when you are when it, on, on the manual that comes somewhere in the back. There'll be instructions of what to do, etc. But it's so simple, and that's the idea behind it. Because previously, it was left to people who really knew what they were doing with photographic paper and dark rooms, etc. And that's not so common these days. So it needed something. It, it, I felt like a product was needed so people could, you know, really fall in love with astronomy and photography and and art in the same time, which is is what I'm very passionate about. So I've been racking my brain slightly. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to imagine what this thing would look like if you put it um, a solar can at the equator. Would it be like? Oh God, I don't have one printed up. Maybe I do on manual four, but. Matthew Robinson, <laughs> the chap that I mentioned earlier, yeah, uh, who was in Finland, also happens to have been very, very close to the equator. Oh, in the yeah, about a bit. He sounds interesting. Oh, oh yeah, you should get him on. <laughs> he's very interesting. What does he do? Uh, he's a photographer and okay. uh, very good one too, and an astronomer as well. So a, a science explainer. And I, I really did think I had. Picture. Maybe it's issue three. Uh, if I haven't, I do apologise. Oh, maybe you can't really see it very well there, but it's very, very wet in the Maldives, right in the middle. Ah, there. You see Ooh. the line straight up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they're going straight up, but 
uh, the soda can moved in a high storm, so it's moved, so you can see it's gone straight up. But it's a really still something incredible that you can see a very nice abstract, colourful image with lots of different hues and tones. And yes, on the equator, you basically get it going overhead. It really depends how you install your soda can. Yes, uh, one of the ones I saw, um, uh, somebody had installed eight. Oh yeah, yeah, on yeah. One, on, one, on one post, uh, yeah. and so you've got lots of amazing results from that. That's really beautiful. Yeah, that that will show uh, north, south, east, and west, both uh, vertical and horizontal. So it gives people an idea of of what sort of result you're going to get. A good tip uh, for people living in the UK who either make one of these or want to buy one themselves is uh, the sun gets so high in the sky that it might be best to tilt your soda can back so it can collect the highest ones. Otherwise, you do run the risk, whether it's a, whether it's problematic or not, of, of cropping off the top of the sun in the, in the middle of the summer, which is fine, not fine, doesn't really matter. It's all an experiment. It's as much an experiment as it is a camera and a learning experience. So if you want to win a, a solar can, then post your best sun image. Doesn't have to be a solar can image, any wonderful sun image that you've ever taken. Either post it to the comments, find a way to email it to the SPA. We've got numerous email addresses or email to robin at popastro.com. Well, that was a wonderful education in wonderful things. I'm really looking forward to my solar can arriving. Use popastro20 for the discount code at solarcan.co.uk. And um, hopefully your solar can will arrive in the next week or so just to catch the sun as it's at its nice big, yeah. I'll make sure anyone that uses the code, I'll send it out first class uh, for tomorrow morning. So it should run on, uh, arrive on Monday morning. How good's that? You can have your solar can ready to catch the top, top utmost, um, what do you call those etchings on it? Have they got a name? Uh Parabola would be the wrong name, wouldn't it? Arcs, the arc, the, the, yes, the path of the sun arc. or the arc of the sun. Yeah. The arc of the sun. How beautiful. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking to Thanks you. Thanks for inviting me on. But lots of fun. One more comment here. Does Sam have to drink? Uh, Neil wants to know if Sam, uh, yeah, because this is how I know you is through Neil. Sam has to drink the content of the cans before turning them into cameras. They do make me thirsty when I look at those cans. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, it's worrying because as a product, if I start drinking out of one just for a joke or something, <laughs> that, then people will get really confused. But the first ones that I made, I had uh, a prototypes. And before I, you know, created what I created, I bought them from uh, these, uh, the, the, the 440 mil beverage cans from Sainsbury's, the cheapest beer they had, which is about 19 pence a can. And and did I drink it? No, I didn't. It was the most vilest liquid I've ever come across. So it just went down the drain and I cleaned them. Prototypes. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been really lovely speaking to you. And um, if you want to try and win one of these, email a picture of the sun to robin at popastro.com or use popastro20 discount code for the solar cam. That's great. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Uh, Thanks very much for having me on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Catch you later. Yeah, bye. Bye. Lovely, lovely. Oh, love it. Can't wait for my solar can to arrive. Um, hmm. So we are about to go over to Sandra, if you just bear with me. Let's... There we go. Um, banners. Okay, so we are now about to go over to Sandra. Let me get her banner up. Here she comes. Sandra is our um, section director of the Aurora and NLC. She's up somewhere in the wilds of Scotland, and we're coming to you in three, two, one. Here she is. Hi there. <laughs> oh, hi. How are you? At least the internet's working. <laughs> I hope to God it is because I don't want you to cut out like you did when we were in rehearsals the other day. Absolutely. Oh, how are you? Wonderful. It's it's been foggy and then the sun's come out, so there's a chance I might see some Doctor Lucian clouds tonight. You never know. When was the last time you saw them, Sandra? Um, about nine or ten days ago. Since then, it's been foggy up here. Well, the entire east coast from 
basically East Anglia all the way up to Aberdeenshire has been foggy. So I'm so sorry for you. No. <laughs> do you look at you had gorgeous sunshine, have you? Oh, what do you mean? I'm still look at my my hair is still wet. I've been like caught out that many times in the rain today. I am one a soggy bunny. Oh, you've had the thunderstorms. Well, we're on Anglesey here, and for some reason they skirt us. I can see them happening over the mountains. I get to watch the anvil heads from a distance, which isn't isn't too bad, really. Oh, smashing. Right, so, 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 up, sorry. You want, a, you want a little thing on Noctilus and clouds, do you? Oh, well, you can talk. Well, we can we can chat to the night away, Sandra. The night is young. We've got um, 15 minutes to chat about. Because uh, you tell us first a little bit about your role at the SPA. You've been doing this for a long time, haven't you? Um, I actually took over in 2003, in April 2003. I wasn't born then. <laughs> yes, you're not, <laughs> you're not that young. <laughs> and uh, so, yes, I've been doing it for, what, 17 years now? Kath says hello. Hi, Kath. <laughs> and uh, yes, I, I, it was one of those things I ended up doing basically because I did the Aurora as well. And if anybody's been up to northern Scotland at this time of year, uh, the sun barely sets. It's bright. Um, so the Aurora, you can't see the Aurora, but uh. you can see Noctilus and clouds. So it's what I call my summer job. <laughs> so, so from about the middle of May, through June, July, to the, about the middle of August, you can see these beautiful clouds. Now, there's a funny story attached to this. Um, I'm from Sunderland, and when I was young, if I was good, not very good, but if I was good, I got to walk in what we call Backhouse Park. Now, I thought it was called Backhouse because it was back of the houses, but it was, wasn't. It was called after somebody called Thomas Backhouse. Yeah. Now, he, he was an avid cloud watcher. Mm -hmm. This was back in the 1800s, and I'll get you the exact. In 1883, uh, one of the biggest wallops occurred. Krakatoa exploded. It was a huge volcano, and it sent clouds of dust and particles all around the globe, caused massive um, outages on food and things like that, the global sunsets. So he was in his element. But about a year and a half after that, he noticed something these strange clouds appearing after sunset and he had no idea what they were. So he called them Noctilucent. Nocti means night and lucent means shining. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the strange things is unlike most things in astronomy, most things in astronomy go back donkeys, um, thousands of years. Noctilucent clouds only go back to the 1800s. So they're a fairly recent event. 1800s. I always thought it was about 50 years ago. Hmm. No. <laughs> oh, that um, makes me feel slightly better about them not being rocket pollution then. Well, basically what happened, they reckon, is Krakatoa blasted so high that it managed to get up through the levels of the atmosphere. Now, I don't know if you people know the levels of the atmosphere. The troposphere is the bottom one. That's where we all live. And these are all controlled by temperature. So in the troposphere, the temperature drops with height. If you go to the next level, the stratosphere, the temperature rises with height. Okay. Right. So it's a very strange area. That's where all your ozone breaks down and stuff like that. You then get to the mesosphere, and this is the one I'm interested in. The temperature then drops with height. And it gets to the top of the mesosphere, which is the coldest part of the atmosphere. And it's about minus 123 degrees centigrade. Mm -hmm. uh, above that, the thermosphere, which means it, the atmosphere gets hotter again. It wouldn't feel hot because the atoms are so far apart. But because it's that's the top, that's where noctilucent clouds form. And that's at about 50 miles high. Now, because they're 50 miles high, and because they're very tenuous, you only see them when the sun goes down. And when the sun gets low, really low below the horizon, about six degrees, they are still lit. It's like you're going up a mountain and seeing the ground beneath you going dark, but the sun's still shining on you as it sets. Do you get the idea? I do. And I've actually never had the layers, the layers of the atmosphere explained like that. Am I... If you could hear my little thoughts, they'd all be going, wow, wow, wow. 
it, it's a, it's all based on temperature. So it, it, the temperature drops and then it rises and then it drops and then it rises again as it goes into outer space. Ooh, there was an article in the Times in the early 1900s when the NLCs were bright enough to read a news to, no to read a copy of the SPA magazine by night. <laughs> yeah, no, but it, it, this nearly caught me out, and I've been doing it for donkeys. I was taking a picture of Noxalus and clouds and really enjoyed myself, and then I saw oh the aurora. All right, I'll get them both in the same shot. So I took the picture. Nothing. That was about a second exposure. So. I gave it two seconds. No, four seconds. No, eight, ten. I ended up with a 20 second exposure. The reason being the aurora emits its own light. So if it's fairly weak, you you're not going to see much. It's not going to kick out much. Noctilus and clouds. Clouds are reflecting the sunlight. So they're going to be quite bright. And if they're quite dense, you know, it, it really does shine. Okay. Can, as as he says, you not only read newspapers, it can actually leave, leave a shadow. The NLCs can. Yes, you can stand there and have a, a shadow cast by the Nucleus and Clouds. Do you remember? So I've got a lovely story about the NLCs last year. Go on. Um, we had a, oh, I'd had a really, I'd been to Jodrell Bank for um, a meeting and it was a very hectic meeting and I came out feeling like I just won the whole universe. I love that place. <laughs> and to try and calm down, I asked whether any of my friends were doing any astronomy on Midsummer's Day last year. And um, I finally managed to find a friend and we shot out and we, we were trying to find Mercury, um, uh, Mars in the sunset. And we were on a really busy dual carriageway with the telescope set up, and we were really frustrated. And I just went, Andy, look. And they were almost right up to the top of the sky. Do you remember last year on Midsummer's Day? Do you know how many reports I got that day? <laughs> it's probably over, the busiest day of your life. Over 70 that night. Yeah. And then there was that was just on the one night, and I, I replied to all of them. I was oh. overloaded. It was actually seen as far down as Italy. Wow. Wow. Now that's quite far down, isn't it? It is. And it seems to be spreading. Um, we don't know the reasons. Um, one, one of the things that re the noctilucent re cloud relies on is A, dampness and B, temperature. Okay. And, now, and it's got colder and it's also got wetter. So this is one of the coldest and wettest times. So we're getting a really good season. Well, we would if the Scottish weather didn't get in the way or the fog. But uh, do you know, I'm sorry, while you're chatting, I just have to do what every astronomer does. I've been wanting to do it since the start Go of on. the broadcast. Is I need to check my weather because I've set my <laughs> alarm for the solstice um, at 4.30 and hopefully we're going to watch it live streaming. Oh, oh, lovely. Let's have a look. You're not going to Stonehenge or anything like that? No, I'm pulling a face. Look, it's just a thick grey cloud. Yes. <laughs> Bit of sunshine tomorrow. Ah, bit of midsummer sunshine, and um, not going to see any noctilucent. Oh no! Uh, I thought there was a thirty degree heat wave coming. It only says eighteen degrees on my weather app. So, but that's oh, that... for you. No, that's later on. It's, uh, that's when the southerly winds come in. That's a bit. That's after the weekend. I think Saturday and Sunday are not too good. So uh, I think a lot of people get their um, noctilucent clouds, their night shining clouds, mixed up with either just sunset or um, with is it with, what's the other cloud that look quite serious? The, 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 the high cirrus, yes. Now, what what you've got to remember is it's got to be dark. Um, now, because the the hours have shifted, you're basically looking from eleven o'clock at night to three o'clock in the morning. Eleven till three, yeah. Right, so if you're doing it any time before that, you're going to be lucky to get it, or you might get the wrong clouds. Also, if you've got a a program that does um, the sky, um, I'll use Stellarium. Yeah. Ch check for when the sun gets to six degree degrees below the horizon. Okay. Once, once it does that, but a good a good guide is in the north. There's a star called Capella. It's Auriga the Charioteer. You've disappeared. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. No longer live. It's the quietest I've heard you for ages. It's oh so quiet. Nope. 
Caldera Wood. Hi. Ah! There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, sorry, you, I'm, uh, I'm glad you enjoyed that two second silence. Sorry, yeah. please continue. It's the only time I've ever heard you quiet. <laughs> well, I'm not going to come on Facebook and say now, am I? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so now where was I? Uh, so, In the so sky we, somewhere, Sandra. Absolutely. Yes. So, <laughs> so basically, knock to loose some clouds. I'm going to say, ah, I've. Um, so. From, from about mid-May, they, they start, and there's a, there's a lovely thing on space weather. We call it a polar daisy. If you go onto space weather, on the left-hand side, about a quarter way down, there's a little picture of the pole, and it will show you the Noctilucian cloud is taken from the AIM satellite. Hey, you can, you can see. Is that yes. like a forecast, then? It's a forecast, but the pictures are about three days old. But if oh. you watch it you'll see that it rotates and it takes about five days to rotate. Um, the, the, it's the, the rotation of the earth that drags it. So if you see the clouds sticking out and you, you can roughly calculate, oh, well, if this was taken three days ago, tonight should be a good night. So, oh, so, so, the... so you, you can almost sort of predict it. Um, not quite because it's, it varies, but, and by the looks of it, it's getting very, very dense. There's a lot of cloud up there, and it's spreading down to almost my latitude. Well, if it does that, that means it's going to be visible, what, down to central France or somewhere like that. So. Okay, so the, so there's a chance that if you've got a break in the sky and you look towards um, which direction look, should we look, be looking? Tend to look north, start to look north. Um, when this, this the sky is getting dark, and if you can see the star capella, which we call the patron saint of Noctilucian cloud watchers. Ah. <laughs> and it's always in the pictures. If you take a picture, yes, um, that's a good one, Andy. Um, there's some in Germany. Um, I forget the addresses of them, but you can you can find them. And uh, they look north and when they've got clear weather. So if you can see them in Germany, there's a good chance it's going to come our way pretty cool, pretty quickly. Right, so I'm going to set my alarm twice tonight, once at 1am and once at 4.30am. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's about your best time. That'll be, uh, that's local G U UT midnight, so. Let me know how the milkman feels. <laughs> yes. Well, how do you think I feel? I got to get at about four o'clock this morning. So. Oh, my gosh. So, Sandra, could you please tell us how you can submit your wonderful pictures to you at the Pop Astro magazine, which is out every two months, and one of the main um, membership benefits. Right. If you send them to sandra-b at hotmail.co.uk, um, tell me, A, where you live, what you saw, the double date, so say, say it's tonight and it's the 19th so it would be 19 slash 20s that tells me what oh, night it was okay um, yeah. um and your full name and that's that's all you need to do and you might find yourself with a picture in the magazine and then you can go wow look i'm in the magazine you can get your name up in paper in the pop astro magazine sandra yeah, have, you, have you got one of the new mugs you know paul's been working day and night to come up with new puns for the mugs i quite oh. like the one about uh making my drinks the milky way and also <laughs> stirry stirry night is quite a good one stirry, stirry night. <laughs> you know oh. what I do whenever i am um, when i'm stirring my coffee though go on and this is not a cool slogan for a mug but i do always think about dark matter and you know that with the way the milk goes in the mug in that lovely spiral shape i always think that the cosmic coffee spoon that stirs our galaxies is a curious one indeed well i've always figured that the the bubbles when they all go round together that's how the galaxy works i think we've Does just got big, big coffee mugs holding the galaxies together and absolutely that's yes when when you stir it that creates the black hole in the middle that drives it the universe is just a giant starbucks <laughs> absolutely yes let's have a look so get your sun pictures meet to me tomorrow okay so get your sun pictures to robin to be in with a chance to win the solar can experiment um robin at popastro.com submit your sun pictures did you like the solar can Oh, it's fantastic. Oh, uh, really? Every now and then you, on spa on astronomy picture of the day, you get a solar can picture. And these people have been doing it for a year, you know, and they get all sorts of traces. And it's fabulous to see. 
Oh, It'd be quite, Craig has a lot of patience, though. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's it's going to be exciting for about 10 minutes while I nail it to a tree and then I'm just going to forget about it. I'm going to try yeah. and go from solstice to solstice with it, though. Yeah, I'll go for it. Go for it. And oh, I'll, 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 I'll keep my fingers crossed for good weather for you. And Well, we'll keep up. Mm, that's a lot of finger crossing we've got to do for good weather for all the astronomers across the world. That's a, a, lot, a lot of knuckles cracking. Sandra, as always, it's been a pleasure and we'll get you more uh, on more frequently. And your internet was fantastic, most importantly. I'd, well, I've switched off the phone. I've switched off everything else. So you had prior for priority. So. <laughs> oh, how wonderful. I feel so flattered. Sandra, it's been a pleasure. I'll catch you soon. OK. You take care, Vicky. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. OK, so let's just recap what we've been up to this evening. Um, we've got the um, document 18. We've got the Schools Observatory doing the Sol Stick experiment where you measure the length of a stick. Just go to Schools Observatory uh, Google um, stick experiment and you should be able to help measure the size of the earth by measuring the length and the shadow of the stick at one o'clock over the next couple of days. Thank you very much to Carolyn Kennett, our archaeo astronomer who came on and was telling us about um, about stone circles and the solstice. Thank you to Sam Cornwell of SolarCan and his brilliant um, solar arc pictures, winner SolarCan. Details are on the bottom of the screen there. And uh, yeah, it's been a wonderful evening. Please do consider joining the SPA. It's £23 a year. You get the magazine, you get to mingle with wonderful people like Sandra and Robin and Kath and Paul and me and all the other amazing people at the SPA for £23 per year. And give this video a like, give it a tag, give it a share and it's been an absolute pleasure thank you to everybody who's contributed this week it has been wonderful have we got any more comments before we go away or shall we just go every time i do this i always think to myself there is no tv presenter in the world who waves at the end of the tv show <laughs> but, <laughs> is that professional uh, i wish you clear skies this thing I can't remember the last time I saw a star, actually. It was probably about two weeks ago when I managed to crack this out and I got to see um, the Jupiter moons and maybe a tiny little bit of the Saturn rings. I'm a bit deprived of astronomy, but maybe we'll get some noctilucent clouds this evening if we get a break on that soggy old grey doggy of a horizon. I'll catch you all later. It's been an absolute pleasure. Vicky video. Oh, I'm gone. I've just had a message off my friend saying, where am I spending solstice? Uh, I'm on Anglesey, James. <laughs> oh, thank you. That was very interesting. Thank you all. And James is saying, where am I spending the solstice? Hello to you and Badger. I'm here in Triad the Bay. Wonderful, wonderful. I'll catch you all later. Thank you very much. Very professional wave right at the end. Goodbye. <laughs>